Canvas, starting off with the two SE 5As, then the Avro 504K and the BE 2C from the Bremont Great War Display Team. The SE 5As on the brake. And then the rather slower, more lumbering forms of the 504 and the BE 2C. There's the B2 pulling off to the right and the 504 to the left. The Avro 504 must go down as one of the most outstanding aircraft of the RAF's 100-year existence if we were to pick out particular highlights. It first flew in 1913 and nearly 9,000 had been produced by the war's end. And that was more than any other single aircraft type of the 1914-18 to 18 conflict. This is the aircraft that's about to run in from our left. It was used as a bomber, as a home defence fighter, an artillery spotter and more, but perhaps the 504 was best known during and after hostilities as a trainer. And the 504 introduces a thread that will run throughout today. We have an incredible range of training aircraft, both past, present and future wing and rotary, so many 504 where it's all started. Frontline terms, it was a 504 of the Royal Flying Corps that was the first British aircraft to be shot down after war broke out in 1914. 504s of the Royal Naval Air Service bombed the German Zeppelin airship factories at Friedrichshafen in November 1914, and the first one to be delivered to the Royal Naval Air Station at East Church conducted a daring raid on the submarine base, German submarine base at Bruges that December. By the time of the 1918 armistice, about 3,500 were in service, mainly trainers, they had a mixture of rotary and radial engines, but they were main phases, special flying school, RAF flying training schools, and university air squadrons until the early 1930s. they knocked up several first. It was 504N models at the Central Flying School that became the first aircraft in the RAF to use instrument flying trainers. In those days they had flying flying and turning cases added. 504 was a regular performance of many of the interwar RAF pendant pageants and displays, the traditions of which are carried on by events such as the one we're at today. Flying as a close pair. Meanwhile, we have the two SE-5As. SE standing for Scout Experimental. Very fast, the SE-5A, and if not quite as agile as another of the great British fighters of the period, the Sopwith Camel, it was better at high altitude and more than a match for the German types it would have come up against. World War I, 21 British or Empire squadrons and two American units flew SE 5A. And it was the mount of many of the leading aces of the time, famous names such as Albert Ball, Mick Manock, James McCutton, and Billy Bishop. More than 5,200 SE 5s and the improved SE 5As were built, most of them not by the Royal Aircraft Factory itself, but by Austin Motors and Vickers. As I said, these are all replica aircraft. The two SE-5As are actually 7-8 scale, so not as large as the original would have been. Then we have the B-2C following them. This replica was originally made for a Biggles film called Biggles Sweeps the Skies that was never actually made. It was built by
by Charles Boddington and very appropriately when it was returned to the UK for its restoration to flight a few years ago it was his son Matthew who led that effort. Final pass from the four aircraft of the Bremont Great War display team. The two SE5As leading in the BE2C and the Avro 504K which is a replica built by the Pursang company in Argentina. And so they're departing off slot in the two SE5As in today's display. We have Dave Linney and Mike Pollock. The B2C, known by Matt Boddy, was Matthews and Slater. And then we have retired British Midland and British Airways airline captain Mark Johnson in the 504K, which is owned by Eric Burton Rose, grandson of the Avro Company founder, Sir Alliance Burton Rose. What a way to start our RAF 100, RAF Cockpit Air Show. What a way indeed. So just a few moments as the aircraft clear to the south. At that kind of speed, it will take them a little while to clear our airspace. I have heard the next display item is already on frequency. I do have a little message before then. If you are currently sitting towards the right hand side of the showground, you may find you're getting very friendly with some of your fellow spectators. I have been told it is getting a 